what's up guys we're here welcome back to the channel we are finally back with some demon hunter and the, even though this is my favorite class we have not done a marauder sentry build for you guys and i thought you know what we need to do this it's one of the most powerful builds for demon hunter and it's very very good for echoing nightmares um it's very good at high level pushing i think it's pushed all the way up to 150 so i wanted to showcase the build for you and talk about a couple things that are uh, some options for the build as always so let's go through the marauder build now i know it's going to be a little bit different than how some other people uh do it so first things first we have our yang's recurve that you need for the cost reduction because this build does cost a lot with the uh sentries as well as using cluster arrow because it costs so much so you want the yang's recurve now i like the power that's on here i just don't like the animation that it has for the power it looks terrible right for even any any skill doesn't matter it just looks bad i hate it but it is really cool um so make sure you have the power on your rings uh yang's recurve for um just max everything okay that's your sanctified item all right make sure you get the fire cluster arrow no longer drops explosive ordnance instead it's an explosive force into a piercing ray of light i really wish they could have done something different with that but anyway excuse me then bomb bombardiers rucksack you need this for two additional centuries this is going to give you five because we are using the embodiment of the marauder set everything is done through this the six set piece bonus gives you twelve thousand percent in increased damage for every active century so times that by five you do an insane amount of damage as well as having all the companions by your side so you want to have five of the six set pieces for this and we're combining that with the captain crimson set for the cost reduction as well as cooldown for some of our abilities okay next we have wraps of clarity for just more defense as we spend our hatred with uh evasive fire and then into our rings and amulets we have scorch necklace for more damage as well as focus and restraint for even more damage our legendary gems guys that we're rocking is zaya zone of vengeance for more damage especially at distance and then enforcer because technically this is a pet build and from what i understand using the polar um station as well as your companions is going to allow you to do more damage that way so enforcer max it out and then of course bane of the trapped as we're just pulling enemies for more damage so that is the initial gear guys we're rocking um diamonds and everything for just all resisting cooldown into Arcanized Cube, we have Mana Core for reduced cost and increased damage for Cluster Arrow. Zoe's Secret to give you uh, maximum damage reduction for every companion you have open. And then Ring of Royal Grandor, which completes our uh, Captain Crimson's as well as our Marauder sets. Into our skills, guys, we got Evasive Fire Focus for just to give us the maximum amount of hatred. Um, get back every time we hit this because we are going to be spending a lot of hatred in this build. Now, uh, Cluster Arrow here's the thing so there's a few different ways to do this and this is totally up to you maelstrom is very good i think this is uh a lot better for your speed builds in a way or even loaded for bear is good for speed builds um and then there's cluster bombs these are going to be your main three runes that you're going to kind of cycle through for higher gr pushing you're either going to rock loaded for bear or cluster bombs and that's totally up to you um i like loaded for bear so in the showcase that we're going to do at the back end of this video guys we're going to rock loaded for bear so totally up to you you pick whichever one that you like then we have vault tumble so that way we can get around this build really focuses on dropping our sentries and just pulling everything and then just lighting them up so we want to be able to get around the map as fast as we can with tumble and then uh, companion wolf companion the set is going to give you all of them but uh just pick wolf companions that way when you actually activate you're going to be able to get the bonus there but you do get all the companions and then sentry polar station uh this allows you to get um more uh, turrets active and then uh, the biggest thing is it slows their movement as well as possibly uh, freezing them I don't think it actually frees them I think it just it just reduces their movement speed which is great for pulling and grouping these enemies up uh, for us to just unload our entire arsenal on them and then of course vengeance dark heart um, for damage reduction and more reduction okay our passives we have custom engineering guys for increased duration of centuries by 100% which is good and then it increases it um, to have more charges on there so the set is three instead of two then we got tactical advantage to help get around the move of the map faster ambush to deal more damage and then call of the week to deal more damage so that's the initial build guys there's not really a whole lot of flexibility in, in the passives i don't think you can maybe change a few of the skills if you really wanted to but 
that is going to be the gear for the build, guys. Uh, this build is really, really fun. It's amazing for Echoing Nightmares. Now, I'm going to go in, guys. We're just going to do a 100 for you. Um, we did actually get a really good uh, Primal Ancient on the chest piece, which is great. And I know in, a, in my offseason, I have a Primal Ancient Bombardier's uh, Rus Ruck Rucksack. So, but this build is very, very good. So let's just showcase it for you guys. And then we'll come back and talk about a few other things that you can do. So this is what we need to do for the build, guys. When you start to play it, you're just going to want to pop your companions, drop your um, sentries. You're going to want to hit vengeance as much as possible. Now, again, you want to try to get five active as fast as possible um, because you want to benefit from having all five for maximum damage okay once you have all five that's where you're going to be dealing all your damage which is huge the build isn't the tankiest let's say but it it is it is very nice like we want to be able to just do everything i think a lot of people get uh mixed up on this because um the build is very what's the word i'm looking for like mechanically inclined so you have a lot of things going on right you need to be able to keep your companion stuff up you know always hit that just to have it you want to be able to get around the map you want to be dropping your your turrets as well as using evasive fire and just spamming uh your cluster arrow so there's a lot going on right now, this isn't necessarily the, the greatest speed build, per se. But it does provide so much value because of those turrets. Again, you want to be using evasive fire every five seconds, guys. Or if you're running really low on... Uh, if you're running really low on hatred. But otherwise, we're, like, we're moving through this pretty quick. And this is a 100. So, make sure you get those turrets out. Pop that vengeance and just keep it going. There's a lot of flavor to this. There's going to be a lot of stutter stepping when you play this on higher GRs, right? But the build is just so cool. I like Loaded Bear so much for the uh, for the um, the way the beams look. Like I think they just, those things look so cool, you know? Oh man, we gotta go all the way around for that, huh? Ooh! Let's go ahead and grab a shield pylon so we don't die. Make sure every five seconds, guys, you're hitting your evasive fire so you get your props from your um, from your rings. Very important. Now, when it comes to the Rift Guardians, they're pretty easy to kill after you get a couple of uh, the turrets down. But as you guys can see, the build is just really, really fun. Very, very cool. Very easy to play. Um, no, I actually take that back. I'm wrong. Don't listen to me, guys. It is not easy to play. Okay. The build is very mechanically like hard to play in that sense if you're not used to playing something like this um, because you have so much stuff going on. Uh, I, I like speedier builds, stuff that only requires a couple inputs and just where can, I can really have fun. I don't have to think too hard. But let's see. We cleared that 102 minutes and 30 um, seconds, which is great for a GR100. Two to three minutes is fantastic um, for this build. So, again, this Marauder cluster arrow there's a few different ways to build it and you have a few options when it comes to cluster arrow itself um so the build is just really really good overall it's not one of my uh favorite demon hunter builds but it is basically one of my favorites for echoing nightmares besides the um satyr build that we have this season once that season goes away this is the main one that i use for echoing nightmares because you just you start on the map, you drop all your turrets, and you basically just stand in a couple spots and just let that let them do the work. It makes it very, very easy to do. So that's going to do it for today's video, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in and watching. I hope that if you are a Demon Hunter, uh, that you guys enjoy the Marauder build. It can push those higher GRs all the way to 150. This is definitely a really cool build and a very fun build once you start to get the mechanics down. So... Thank you guys so much for watching and all the support. If you guys are new here, be sure to subscribe. I really do appreciate it. It really helps out the channel. And um, as always, guys, stay gaming, and I'll get you guys in the next Diablo 3 video. Peace.